everybody. So we're going to look at this week's news, 17 to 23 uh, February. Not as much as last week, um, but still lots of bad news. <laughs> so anyway, um, we, we will get to it. I am planning to stream uh, a bit of Resident Evil 2 uh, right after this one. Well, well, we'll see. On the on the half hour or on the hour, depends depends when we finish. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll get into the news. Let me just make sure we're on the right screen. Okay. I gotta remember to press the right button here. Let me just check. <laughs> okay, that looks fine. Okay, uh, okay. So like I did last time, I kind of structured it so that we'd have sort of game announcements um, and game news, and then industry news, and then all the bad shit basically. Uh, so we'll end. We'll end on a bad note. <laughs> anyway, so as you can probably read here. Uh, Darkest Dungeon 2 teaser. So again, this is a, a trailer I haven't seen, so I'm going to be watching it for the first time. Turn desktop audio on, and we will full screen this. In the howling darkness of the end, Men will become monsters, but hope will ride with those courageous enough to carry the flame. Okay, <laughs> well that was it. Uh, so more of a teaser, I suppose. I suppose it does say teaser, not trailer. Uh, Darkest Dungeon 2, cool. They're going to the mountains, and it's cold, so I guess they're doing a kind of Mountains of Madness thing. Uh, Darkest Dungeon, if you're not familiar, is a kind of kind of team management uh, roguelike thing. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. But you get like a group of adventurers, and you send them into the Darkest Dungeon, and they gather loot and, and whatever in a kind of randomized thing. But Darkest Dungeon's whole deal is that it's really uh, hard uh, and you are going to fuck up constantly. And sometimes just random shit will happen and people go insane and things like that. So it does have a bit of a Lovecraft uh, eldritch theme going. So it seems they're going to continue that in Darkest Dungeon 2 with uh, the mountains, the mountains of madness. Anyway, moving on. So it's still game news, but it's just not good news. Uh, heartbreaking news as the Untitled Goose game sees unfortunate delay. So uh, this Untitled Goose game, you might be familiar with some of the, the artwork here where you basically you play a, a, a goose who uh, annoys the shit out of people in, in the village. Um, <laughs> so fun it's like a fun way to, to, to deliver uh you know not bad news exactly but you know not welcome news anyway i'm like i'm happy to wait for for the untitled goose game to be honest i didn't think it was even coming out uh early in 2019 i assumed it was going to be later in 2019 so that's that's fine by me. Desktop audio is still on, so I'm going to turn that off. Anyway. Okay, so some more game updates, but all still shitty stuff, because Activision are back back in the news. Four months after launch, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 gets loot boxes. And according to Eurogamer, they're awful. I'm not, uh, I would not dispute that. Anyway. So Black Ops 4 gets loot boxes well after the time where it would have been news, uh, you know, coming up to its launch window uh, and, and early launch sales and things like that, where they make most of their money. Um, they wouldn't have wanted to have the bad press of there being loot boxes because loot boxes were not, you know, um, you know, the Battlefront 2 uh, hubbub about loot boxes had, had come back at that point. So... Anyway, they're in here now, uh, and not only do they have loot boxes, so, I mean, having lo the loot boxes anyway is bad, you know, because it's randomized shite, uh, and it's, you know, it ends up becoming pay-to-win, because there even is, like, 
uh, a signature weapons that come in these crates that have a 25% uh, XP bonus. That is, that's pay to win. <laughs> that's, that's like, that's exactly it. Uh, there's other problems with it. Uh, these loot boxes don't display the probabilities like they do for FIFA, like Apex Legends do. Uh, it includes duplicates. You know, all, all the bad things you're not supposed to do with loot boxes. Uh, not surprising that Activision is doing it. Oh yeah, here's where I was looking for this somewhere. Um, much of the anger stems from the feeling that Black Ops Four is buckling over the pressure to just generate more money. So they've got um, they've got the game already, which was whatever sixty nine ninety nine when it when it released fifty nine ninety nine whatever. Then you had the season pass that was just for TLC maps. That was another forty pound or forty euro because nobody knows how to do uh, currency conversions. It seems, and then they had the battle pass, which is the thing from um, you know Fortnite the contraband progression system that you had to pay for or that you could pay for rather you had the option to do so uh, and then you could pay to just do better on the progression system literally pay to win then you had special orders that had cosmetic items in them and then microtransactions for fucking reticles you know that stupid smiley face that was a legendary reticle and now loot boxes on top of that it's just this is just Activision trying to get as much money as possible the, like a ridiculous cash grab and then to top it all off the update is called grand heist <laughs> it's like you can't make this shit up uh, you know this is just more activision having you know from last week record you know making record sales making record revenue then firing everybody who you know helps make all that record revenue and then just trying to grab even more money off people. It's just, it's disgusting. Okay, this is more news on Oninaki because I'm gonna keep, you know, beating the drum for this game because it looks cool um, and nobody's really talking about it. So the Chrono Trigger director uh, is working on uh, Oninaki as well. So Chrono Trigger, one of uh, very much beloved JRPGs from ye olde times back when I was a young lad. Um, but there's got there's like a lot of other industry uh, people uh, working on it as well. So you've got the Tokyo RPG Factory already, who made I Am Setsuna and Lost Fear. You know, very good. We need that already. Big dose of veteran talent with uh, uh, Takashi Tokita, uh, best known for Chrono Trigger and Parasite Eve. Actually, actually I didn't know he did Parasite Eve. But Parasite Eve is also a really good game. Uh, and then on top of that, you've got uh, Hirotake Naba, who is a writer for Level 5's Fantasy Life and Tokyo Produce by 2. Blah, blah, previous games. And Atsushi Hashimoto, who does uh, the 999 games and Killer for Surprising. So, cool. Lots of industry talent um, jumping onto Oninaki. So, very, very happy to hear that. And hopefully, people will start talking more about this game. Okay, so. Bad news, more bad news. All I talk about is bad news, it seems. Uh, Sony Japan preparing to wind down PlayStation Vita console production. So, I mean, everyone assumed the Vita was already dead, but now, you know, it really is. Uh, so they're basically just saying, yeah, we're not making any more. They've updated anyone who's trying to buy the Vita. Basically, it now says uh, shipment ending soon, which usually means, you know, it's not being manufactured anymore and they're just gonna sell whatever they have left. It's kind of funny. Uh, I wonder if they're going to change the name of PS Vita, PlayStation Vita to PlayStation Mortis. I don't know. Uh, I mean, everyone kind of assumed the Vita was dead already. Um, a lot of its good games were already available on PS4 anyway. But some of their some of their good games aren't, and that's kind of an annoying thing because now there's really no way to play them unless your Vita is still alive and kicking, uh, which mine is not. <laughs> um, like I'm gonna say, particularly for me, it's Final Fantasy Crisis Core, because I'm a big FF7 nerd and I never really got a chance to play that game properly, and my Vita doesn't really run that well anymore. And it wasn't a digital game; it was, you know, it was only uh, those those UMD discs. Or not? No, sorry, that's the PSP. Actually, it's the PSP I'm talking about as well. All right, fuck the Vita. I don't care. It's the PSP I was talking about. Uh, uh, all right. I probably should have done more research on that. Anyway. Uh, okay. Uh, Reggie Fizam, I think. I actually don't know how to pronounce his name, but that's like kids and love. So, 
Okay, I'm not going into that too much. Uh, Reggie, uh, president of Nintendo America, is retiring. You know, the, of my body is ready fame is retiring in April. Uh, he's leaving Nintendo on a, you know a pretty solid uh, foundation right now. The Switch is doing very well. They're kind of receiving a bit of a renaissance, not a renaissance maybe, but you know people like Nintendo again, or more people rather like Nintendo than than previously. Um, so some kind of funny news: he'll be replaced by a guy called Doug Bowser, which you know, of co- of course. Um, and there's been some you know memes about Bowser taking over Nintendo, and we're only going to see Super Bowser Brothers and, and things like that. Uh, so I'm pretty funny. Um, but one kind of small thing that has put a bit of a wrinkle in it is Doug Bowser uh, used to work in EA, uh, and he was head of marketing for Nintendo, sales and marketing for Nintendo, which means he doesn't really have a developer creator background. So that's kind of been a problem with a lot of the AAA publishers like Activision, EA, Warner Brothers, and so on. They don't have actual creatives or developers in positions of power they have the money men in positions of power so i guess we'll see you know time will tell but you know something something to be aware of and going from activision's layoffs from last week we have even more layoffs from successful people uh, so Guild Wars 2 developer Arena Net plans for mass layoffs. So they haven't actually been laid off yet at time of recording, but you know it's it's going to be happening soon. Uh, Arena Net, known for Guild Wars and Guild Wars 2, among other things, um, owned by uh, NCSoft. NCSoft don't exactly have a sterling reputation for um, taking care of their people, so this isn't exactly surprising, but still. So they're trying to cut costs across the organization, but of course we all know that means cutting costs at the bottom of the organization or in the middle of the organization, but not at the top. It's never at the top somehow. That's kind of weird. I don't know how that works. So they've had a couple of meetings to basically say that, yeah, we're laying people off, but we're not going to tell you who they are until it happens, which is kind of a shitty way to treat your people. You should really give them a heads up or more of a heads up so that they can, you know, start looking for new jobs and things like that. But yeah, more shitty stuff from successful developers. And even more, because we're not, we're not done yet, EA's Australian studio hit by massive layoff. So, um, probably not too well known, but EA do have a studio in Australia who focuses mostly on mobile, de- uh, mobile games. Real Racing 3, The Sims, and Need for Speed No Limits, they're all uh, mobile titles. But yeah, they're being cut in half, more or less. There's like 200 people, and initial estimates were 800 to 100 impacted, but some people have revised that to say it's less than that. But, you know, who knows, because they don't tell anybody. It's just some people are going to be fired. <laughs> Who's it going to be? Haha, <laughs> I'm going to destroy your life now. Oh, we're such clever people. But yeah. But having that kind of a cut to uh, a studio... Uh, it's almost like they're, you know, the whole thing is going to, yeah, going to go under. EA are, you know, definitely known for just killing studios, you know, running them ragged, running them into the ground, and then finally killing them. Another big deal for this though is that um, EA's Australian studio um, were known for, or rather, were a rather large um, employer <laughs> of game developers in Australia, so. Uh, losing these people is a 10% loss of the entire Australian game development industry, so that's pretty fucking devastating. Uh, so yeah, maybe get some of that, um, maybe maybe do a bit of this, maybe, I don't know, this guy seems to be making sense. I don't know how you do it for the whole industry exactly, I'm going to have to do it by country by country, but still, you know, you should do that, okay? We're going to end on some dumbass news, uh, Norwich. Norwich's Fortnite Fortnite Live Festival was a complete disaster. So Norwich is a uh, county in England, county, um, city maybe, I don't know. It's in England anyway. Uh, And they put on a Fortnite Live festival, which was absolute garbage. Uh, Event organizers flogged 2,500 tickets to kids and parents. Entry cost of order £12. Unlimited access for £20. 
an attraction dubbed a cave experience was a lorry trailer with tarpaulin over it or tarp um just like a canvas there was go-karts and other things climbing walls like here's some here's some pictures of the stuff you know shooting range fucking i don't even know like a slide maybe and buy shit uh yeah look look how terrible this is uh this was very much not sanctioned by epic games this is um grounds for very much trademark and copyright infringement here an indoor area where you could play actual Fortnite was probably the best thing there <laughs> you have to pay money to do it and it's a free to play game yeah there's there's some there's some horse shit going on here but um even on top of that even on on on, on top of how bad it was where were some of the quotes it was like the episode of father ted where when the fair comes to Craggy Island, I guess you'll have to see Fighter Ted to know what that's like, but yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, I think there's somebody in the comments had a, a gif of it. Yeah, this is, that's from the episode. Uh, that's not loading. But yeah, he's got like a cat. And, like, it's terrible, and it's meant to be a parody, you know, it's a comedy show. But um, Fortnite is all about hunting people down and killing them. I felt like doing that to the people who organized it. That's some dumb shit. But we're not done with this story, because uh, Epic Games now suing Norwich's Fortnite Live Festival. Uh, so, this is Epic Games just basically saying this was the the logo they used for the event. You know, this is uh, Epic branded Fortnite branded stuff. That uh, ex what are they called? Exciting events or something like that are yeah, absolutely not allowed to use this. So, ticket prices were too high. The attractions were terrible, and families who did pay were left queuing in the cold. Bad stuff. But they've started legal action on uh, 2 44 p.m on uh, 19 when was that days today tuesday i don't know i can't count i can't count live but anyway there's another update later on and basically uh, exciting events have more or less ceased trading entirely so they fucked up big time on this one uh so they're just liquidating all their assets and paying their creditors so they're done you know they did they'd made a, a ridiculous money grab you know, trying to con parents and, and kids on a, on, a, on a fad. I mean, my Fortnite's not a fad. Maybe people will be annoyed with me saying that. But, you know, they heard Fortnite. Kids like the Fortnite will do a thing where we say it's Fortnite, but, you know, just do what we always do. And, well, it's, it's, it's fucked them in the ass. ass. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the news uh, for this week. So... Darkest Dungeon 2 teaser is kind of like the only good stuff out of it. Uh, we had a lot of a lot of industry layoffs still. Um, I don't think we're going to hear the end of that somehow because these are, you know, end of quarter or start of quarter, I guess, you know, trying to, trying to make the books look good before they have their earnings calls. So, yeah, I don't think this will be the end of layoff news. And even the arena that one hasn't actually happened yet. They've just been warned. There's more warning that than the Activision people got. And then Reggie is uh, retiring. So good for him. Being replaced by Bowser. <laughs> Don't know how that will go. Some of the memes around that are pretty funny. And uh, Doug Bowser himself uh, sent a tweet out to basically saying thanks for thanks for all the welcome. In. Thanks for the, you know bleh, thanks for the warm welcome. Sorry, I'm tongue tied today. And in the background, he had uh, two plushes of Mario and Luigi uh, tied up. <laughs> this is pretty funny. Um, what other news do we have? Oh yeah, Black Ops. Fucking Activision being shitheads again. Uh, Untitled Goose Game getting a delay, which I assumed it was already delayed. So, you know, that's not news to me, but, you know, bad news for, for other people. Or unfortunate news. People wanting to be horrible gooses. Geese, geeses? Goose. Whatever. There was something else, but I can't remember. It was, it was so long ago, all of like 10 minutes ago, that I can't remember what it was. Anyway, um, I'm planning to stream Resi 2 right after this. Um, if you don't want to hang around for that, that's fine. I'm going to be playing Claire, uh, and I'm just going to play for about two hours or so, see how far I get. Uh, I'm pretty good at it now, and I'm going to be playing on a lower difficulty because I'm streaming, so... I should do i should get pretty far but you know um obviously if you want to avoid spoilers or you're just sick of me going on about resident evil that's fine um i will be back with industry news next week and i'm just thinking does 
I may possibly not do the news next week. Now that I think about it. Actually, I will. I will do the news next week, even though the games of February video would also be around that time. But um, as, I, as I have said previously, there wasn't a whole lot for me to get through uh, for the games of February because they're quite large games and I've only played a little bit of them. And I actually still haven't played Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, at the time of this recording, so we'll see. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a minute to get set up for Resident Evil 2, so I'll be back at about 2.30pm uh, my time, in about 10 minutes or so. Maybe a little, maybe 2.35, something like that. Um, and we'll play through a bit of Claire Resident Evil 2. Okay? Right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.